CBN Sachs Board of Union, Titan, Keystone, and Colorist Bank. That is our hot topic for today. Well, we'll also be having off the press where we'll be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning. A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rime Paulson. Good morning to you. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. I just had to be silent a little bit. Uh, payback time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was home alone yesterday, so I just needed to be that silent. Wow, you had but, to do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had to do that. I can't do it. So well, you cope. You always cope, even yeah. when I'm not here. Yeah, I know I cope, but I miss my baby. Oh. You know? You're missing your birthday and you're going, you know, yes, no, yeah, mm -hmm. necessary. Okay. I, I wonder how that day is going to be anyway. I, I, I'm hoping that you're going to bring cake and trumpets. And stop saying that this is 2024. <laughs> we no grief for anybody. You have to bring your cake for us. I to wonder enjoy. how that slogan just became the theme for 2024. I don't even know how it originated. Somebody said it was from a young girl. Girl, I saw the video, yeah, I haven't seen the video, but you know. It's just as if, okay, no grief for, for anybody. anybody this you year. know, they pack a jeep, you pack your keke or your wheelbarrow, <laughs> you know, whatever they do. But don't take it too far um, mm. uh, negatively. Yes. Take it very far positively mm -hmm. because if anybody can do anything for themselves, you too can do it. That means achievement or yes. success is not, a, nobody has the monopoly to it. Exactly. So no grief for anybody should should stop at the positive ones, mm -hmm. not when you, you want to use it for the negative one. That's not what we're, we mean by that. Yeah. So. Just make sure that you're holding the reins of your life. Mm -hmm. um, don't agree for anyone who wants to put you down, <laughs> who wants to bully Nobody you. Nobody should intimidate you. Nobody you should know, intimidate yeah. you. So just be yourself. Achieve all your goals and dreams. And yes, so that's the meaning or that's our meaning of no grief for anybody. And we want that to be yours as well. Yeah. Anyways, let's take the quote of the day. There are no secrets to success. It is the result of hard work, preparation, and learning from failure. That is from Colin Powell. Well, technically, those are the secrets <laughs> of success. You need to prepare. Um, you need to, you, because even if God wants to bless you, you need to be at a particular place for him to bless you. Yeah. You know, so uh, my people say you don't crown a chief that is absent. You don't put a crown on someone who is absent. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be present. So. Uh, walk to your destiny, work to wherever you need to. Oh, I like crowned. that. Work to your destiny. Yes. Mm, yeah, you preach. Can, you can like, ah. <laughs> I'm feeling like a seed right now. But, but that's the truth about it. You will need to prepare because when you call, what you call luck could be just uh, preparation meets uh, opportunity. Opportunity. That's what, what they say. So you don't just wait and say, okay, let me pray um my way my to way. success mm. and that's why a lot of times let me digress a lot of times i don't i just look at people uh, pastors especially you know putting programs on i was just about to say the same weekdays, thing mm -hmm. when the person should be at work they are praying for people to get jobs for instance on a monday on a tuesday <laughs> shouldn't that person be, be on the field work. or something mm -hmm. and you're you're i don't know why they do that but um the thing is, today, as we've been told by Colin Powell, prepare so that when the opportunity comes, mm -hmm. you don't, uh, you're not, you're not yeah, wanting. you're not lacking. I have a friend back in the village who worked so hard for a political party and for a particular candidate, and that candidate became a governor. Mm. And they just called him, please come, uh, you're going to be the commissioner. Amazing. So bring your papers. That's all. And, and he, he was prepared there. over the years before he had then. No papers. Oh no! Wow. So he missed out on the commissionership. He he did everything that gave him uh, that would have given him that opportunity because he worked so hard. Oh. They didn't even need to ask anybody, consult anybody. They just called him, come be the commissioner, mm. and he had no papers. That so is he had sad. To go back to school at that point. Yeah. And before he could finish the four years, the tenure of the governor. Oh, I see. 
So you That's need to prepare. Sad. Yeah, you need to prepare. I agree. Um, so I was listening to a message because when I tried, when I'm driving in the morning, well, why in the morning? But like it's about 5.30 there about. I was listening to a message and the person on the radio was talking about your gift mm -hmm. and how your gift is what God would actually use to bless you. Yeah. So you cannot expect God to bless you on an empty tank. You have to fill yourself up. You have to prepare. You have to get the skills. Talent is not enough. I, I try to tell people that. Even for me as a person, over the years, I've realized that I had the talent, you know, even here that I am now being a broadcaster or a journalist, whatever you, you're going to call it, I have the talent, but I did not have the skill to match the talent. And so what you have to do is train. That's why training is important. So you train to ensure that you can match your talent with the right skill set that is required to take you to that place of your destiny. In fact, if, you, if you've ever read the, read the scripture, the, the Bible, uh, you, you would find a very interesting story about talents. Yes. You know, you have talents, you have to explore, you have to, you have to invest in that talent so that it grows more. Right. Otherwise, that little talent that you have might be taken away from you. True. Because once you don't use something, you lose it. True. That's what it is said. So talent, like you said, is not enough. Mm. But just push yourself. No grief for anybody. If anybody <laughs> can do it, you too can do it. Too. But do the positive ones. That's yes. right. All right, let's go to our top trending stories this morning. This is one that has been making rounds everywhere, and everyone has been talking about it, is the EFCC seizing Edu Omar Farouk's passports. Now, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has seized the travel documents of the suspended minister, Beta Edu, and her predecessor, Sadia Omar Farouk, who are being probed for various alleged financial malefiance and during their separate stewardship of the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry. The EFCC had said it recovered about 39.8 billion out of the 44.8 billion allegedly embezzled from the government account by Shehu. On Tuesday, Beta was grilled by the Antigraft investigators for over 10 hours at the EFCC headquarters in Jabi, Abuja, over alleged 585 million naira disbursement fraud. After the marathon interrogation, the embattled 37-year-old minister was released on bail late Tuesday, but asked to report daily to the EFCC's office over the matter. The predicament of the 37-year-old Edu was worsened when the Accountant General of the Federation, Oluwa Toin Mandane, confirmed that although her office of re received a request from the Humanitarian Ministry to make a certain payment, her office did not act on it. She was suspended on Monday by the President with immediate effect, making his party's ex-national woman leader the first to be removed from his 48-man cabinet inaugurated last August. The president also ordered EFCC chairman Ola Olukoyede to conduct a thorough investigation into all aspects of the financial transactions involving the ministry and one or more agencies. Edu, the youngest in the president's cabinet before her suspension, was a fast-rising operator in the political space, having occupied state and national offices at a young age. Before her ministerial appointment last August, she was the Cross River State Commissioner for Health and National Women Leader of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC. Meanwhile, the EFCC father quizzed Edu's predecessor, Omar Farouk, on Tuesday, the second straight day. It has been revealed that the EFCC seized the passport of former national coordinator of the National Social Investment Program, NSIPA, Halima Sheu, who is also being probed for the alleged embezzlement of 44.8 billion naira. The ex minister has been probed over an alleged laundering of 37.1 billion during her tenure as minister. Um, so, this is all about women, um, as we've seen women, well, humanitarian affairs. Um, the ex-minister, the current one, um, it is still allegedly, because we don't know everything, but we said this on the show, we even said it on Tuesday, these are women who have cried for so long about inclusiveness, about um, equality, mm -hmm. about bringing women into the forefront, especially for our nation, and that's the way we can drive it, you know, into the, the place that we actually want it to be. And now we're seeing women do all of these things, which is quite appalling. Because if you've, if you've cried that you've been marginalized for so long, when they give you the opportunity to come and do better, why are you going for the worse? Why are you choosing 
to do something else. And I saw a joke that said Beta did not did not do better with her <laughs> education. Uh, on one of our programs on Fast TV, uh, the title of that segment that we're discussing was Is Cor Corruption uh, Female? Mm. <laughs> that's, that's from Waze, what are you saying, uh, of the, the show. But the thing is, uh, whoever is corrupt, corruption has no gender. Right. Yeah, corruption has no gender. This thing about uh, if you give a woman, he, she will multiply and all that. You know, there are men who are, who are better in that more than even the women. Mm -hmm. And there are women who are worse than, uh, than the men. I've seen mothers where everybody says um, the love of a mother. I've seen mothers killing their children. True. I've seen mothers uh, taking rentage for their grandkids mm -hmm. and in their own houses that they are not supposed to rent. And <laughs> all. I've ridiculous. seen a lot of things that you just ask yourself, is this a woman? The kind of woman that I've been hearing about. But, you know, women are good. They are good women. They are good men. Yes. They are bad women and they are bad men. They They're are good, good people. And, but for now, we've seen cases. It's unfortunate that in the case of Farouk, uh, some monies have been recovered, which means they never left uh, the government coffers to the rightful people. Mm. In the case of Beta, we've not seen recovered money. So mm -hmm. in her case, we're still giving her the benefit of doubt. And by the way, she has been suspended. She has yeah. not been replaced. So yes. who knows what is going to happen? They might move her to another ministry. They might return or, her. Or, yeah, even after and, a thorough investigation. Yeah, so we don't know until she's actually sacked. And we've seen evidences that she had the intention to embezzle or she actually embezzled. Uh, well, let's give her the benefit of doubt. But this is not to say that women have shown that women cannot be yeah. in po positions of authority. They can still be given. We have the likes of Dora Akunyeli, late Dora Akunyeli. We have the likes of Obiezi Kwesili. You know, we're seeing Okonjo women. Wella. Uh, Okonjo when she Wella. was made World, World Trade Organization yeah. uh, chief, we saw the trend of everyone mm -hmm. trying to tie the hair. Yes, and the glasses <laughs> it as was well. Fun. It was yeah. fun. You're yeah. seeing women like um, Chimamanda Adichie. You're actually seeing Nigerian women, women, you know, doing great yeah, things. And women. I think that is what people should emulate. Like, don't go and start. In fact, my question now is, what is the root cause of, of corruption, of stealing? I mean, when you look at the budgets for these people, their money is, it's a lot. It's a bad system. It's a bad system. Sometimes... Um, the system just gives you the opportunity to steal without even knowing it. Uh, because, for instance, I hear um, that there was money voted for air transportation to a state that, that has no had airport. no airport. Yeah. So if you check all the ministries, I'm sure they do this all the time. They so, just manufacture things. Yeah, they, they do this all the time. And it's because the system gives you that kind of opportunity. So you're traveling to to Abuja if, if the air ticket is 200,000. And then you are putting 2 million hmm. to travel to Abuja. That you're not even spending a night in a hotel or something. You're spending that kind of money. That, and the system allows it. So you tell someone on the one hand that you are corrupt. And on the other hand, you know that it's something that uh, it is legal, uh, so to speak, mm. uh, to do. It's not, it's not, it's, it's and, I, and, and, and I hear that um, even if you don't want to be corrupt, sometimes when you get there, um, people, they'll start to tell you, no, this is how we do it, or this is how we do it. And before you know it, you know how, how the Bible will say, um, evil, evil company corrupts mm -hmm. good manners. Mm -hmm. Yes. Before you know, you start to soil your hands. And guess what? If you don't soil your hands, nobody even has anything against you. So if we're seeing all of these things, because there's been rumors that, oh, maybe she's being um, targeted or something. But if, you, if your hands are not soiled, well, I know this is so allegedly, but I'm just saying, if your hands are not soiled, then nobody has something to hold you mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. So I think when you go into office, you ha there's, trust me, the budget that they have is a lot. You have a lot of money. You talk about the allowances, their salaries. But there's always a trap this. because if you go there as an upright person and you want to do the right thing, sometimes they will set traps yes. for you. It's just like a Babalao giving you a portion and mm. telling you the things that he knows one day you will fail so that uh, he gets to get his pound of flesh mm. back. There are people... Career civil servants are very crafty. When we blame because to you, for, to them, you're already coming to block their, yeah. their, the way when they we, get money. When we blame politicians, talk about the career civil servants because nothing gets done without them. Mm -hmm. And then we, we leave them and we, we quarrel with the politicians all the time. Sometimes they tell you outrightly, if you don't do this, you're going to fail. Because yeah. first of all, they you will can't just sack them. Your, yes. Yeah. So that's what the law says. And they, they will do a lot of things and frustrate uh, your administration. Pay the devil for you because the devil may tell you the truth, 
but not all the truth mm. and just lets you fall into the pit. That, that's, that's what happens. So it should be a holistic investigation. It shouldn't be humanitarian affairs only. only. We've seen what happened in the aviation ministry. We've seen the health ministry. We've seen so many other ministries. So if this investigation is being done, let it be done for all the ministries. And let's see how we can sanitize the polity. Yeah, I agree. And I'm quite impressed at how um, things are moving quickly. The president suspended her immediately, like mm -hmm. suspension. Let's let's find out what's going. I don't mm -hmm. want to hear anything. I think she even tried to go see the president as well, mm -hmm. and you know, she, obviously she couldn't. So I like the fact that we're we're getting there. We're getting to the point where we're calling out these things. And if you are corrupt, we would name and shame you, and you are out of the window. And so anybody that is coming there next time, you don't want that type of embarrassment. I like to, I like to see that in the NNPC as well. Yes, that's definitely. where the money is, but. Like I was telling someone yesterday, it would be difficult, difficult because you want to cut the string, the string is tied to another string, yeah. and before you know what is happening, it's like taking a thread out of your, your garment because it's And everything loose, just comes everything undone. Goes, you become naked. Mm. So it's going to be... Difficult. All right, let's take another one. This is ICPC, EFCC, to deepen collaboration in fight against corruption. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, have pledged to dip in collaboration in the fight against corruption in the country. The two anti graft agencies made the pledge on Tuesday in Abuja at a high-level meeting initiated by the chairman of ICPC, Dr. Musa Aliyu. The meeting, which had in attendance the chairman and management staff of the two anti-graft agencies, was aimed at strengthening efforts for a greater impact in Nigeria's anti-corruption drive. The ICPC chairman said that the meeting was also to, dis to discuss other areas of collaboration and deepen existing relationship between two agencies. The, th the two agencies. He expressed the readiness of the ICPC to provide the needed support and cooperation in eradicating corruption in Nigeria. Ali said that the ICPC, under its leadership, was steadfast in its resolve to fight corruption through enhanced interagency collaboration. On his part, the chairman of the EFCC, Mr. Ola Olukoyede, agreed with the position of the ICPC boss on collaboration, saying the meeting had also presented an opportunity for the review of the existing MOU between the two agencies. The EFCC boss also said that the political will of the president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to fight corruption as demonstrated in recent events were enough boost for the anti-corruption agencies to give their best. Yeah, just because of time, maybe we will not dwell on this and even the next one, um, where also the court has remanded a former minister in prison because of corruption and all that. Well, that's what we are applauding the government now, that uh, they're taking... A practical step but it's a shame for EFCC ICPC for to be talking now about collaboration yeah well, that's what they should do naturally you have the army you have civil defense you have every of these our security agencies uh, coming together whatever intelligence they have they share with each other but we've seen situations where one person goes and arrests someone and the other one person releases them mm. and then they go and arrest the person they gave. Like, I have like this there's a competition of, between well, everyone. Yeah, you are, why are you competing? You're, you're supposed to be doing it for the benefit of the country. So if you have intelligence, why not share it? Well, what's, what's the reason for memorandum, memorandum of understanding between mm. two security um, apparatus of the, the country that need naturally to share intelligence? Yeah. So it means maybe these people do not even know uh, what duties they are called to do. So if the two of them have conflicting duties, then remove one of them. Exactly. What's the, what's the point for ICPC and EFCC existing side by side if they don't even know their roles or if, if their roles are conflicting? Intertwined. So remove one of them and let's stop spending money. If it is EFCC that is going to be doing this, let them be. If it is ICPC, let them be. But if they have different roles, let there be some level of sharing of uh, intelligence. intelligence yeah naturally not having yeah. i agree I, I think their roles should be defined everyone should know where they play right and then even if you even if something is happening here you should be willing to share intelligence there is no need there is no need for you to hoard information i mean we had our guests the other data day. bank for the security yeah. people so you go here okay but i'm looking for a suspect i'm the police I should be able to go to where 
EFCC and ICPC can access this as well. Yeah. When we find situations where EFCC knows this and ICPC they are doesn't hoarding know it. The, other, the same thing and they are doing the same corruption fight. Yeah. How does that even work? I mean, we shouldn't hoard information because intelligence is processed information, like, like we say. So if you have information about something, you should be able to share it. Um, EFCC, ICPC, every um, government agencies that we have, you should be able to share intelligence. And that way you can, you know, yeah. keep doing your job well. I have intelligence now. Nigeria <laughs> will work. The intelligence is that Nigeria will work no matter what the, the criminals and everybody will be thinking about. Nigeria will work I, in our time. Mm -hmm. I hope that I, I live to see that time where it really begins to kick off uh, well. But in fact, right now, I have some confidence, some level of confidence. Yeah. That, uh, things, things are, are looking going, up. They yeah. are looking up. We are suffering, but things are looking up. Yeah. And the next intelligence I have is that we're going to take a break now. <laughs> when yeah. we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll just look at the weather and have the quote of the day, and mm -hmm. we'll be back. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now it's time for Off the Press. We'll be reviewing the papers this morning just to know what the national dailies are saying. Um, today we have Nya Etok, who's going to review the papers with us. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, and thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much. Good morning, Thank sir. You. Welcome. Good morning, sir. Welcome. Uh, Prophet, yeah, <laughs> because his name is Ezekiel. Yes, well, once, once I just uh, see he's the one. Okay, it's a prophet coming. Uh, it's good to have you, sir. Uh, thanks Thank for joining you. us. Yeah. Thank you. All right, today we're going to be starting with the Guardian, and the major headline here says anxiety, which is, you know, even the our hot topic. It says anxiety as CBN sacks boards of union, Keystone, and Polaris banks. Um, please, what are your thoughts on this? Mm. All that is going on, we have about three banks here, and we don't even know how many more might um, be sacked. But what is your take on all of this? The fact that the CBN has sacked the boards of Union, Keystone, and Polaris Bank. Okay, um, the very first thing is that um, I've been really concerned about our banks, about the state of our economy, about the dynamics and the fundamentals. Uh, it's one thing to have a, a visionless you know, system. It's another thing to have the federating units or the components of the system frustrating everything that is going on. Mm. We say that the problem with Nigeria today is a problem of corruption. There can never be successful corruption without the active connivance, colluding, and collaboration of the banks. Now, corruption comes in two ways, either the private system or the public system. Within the public system, you can't be successful with corruption without the civil servants working with you. But you see, within this tripartite, the bank is the, the, at the apex at the bottom, you have the you know civil society, and on that hand, you have the 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 the, the, um, the civil servants. Okay, now none of them can successfully prosecute corruption or undertake corruption without the active connivance, collaboration of the banks. And you see, even during COVID, when things were very very difficult. You keep seeing the banks declare humongous and unbelievable profits. Mm. So the question is, to what extent is the bank the problem of Nigeria? 
I think that the banks are one of the biggest problems of Nigeria. Now, you can't have a system that thrives without the MSMEs, the micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises. These enterprises work based on the fundings of their ideas, and the fundings can only go through the banking institution. But I want to tell you that at my level, having what it takes to run a system successfully, I can't assess a loan from a bank. Extremely difficult. Mm. I'm into real estate. I'm into a partnership with the federal government. Even with everything they can see, to get a loan from the bank is almost impossible. Now, if that happens to me, what is the fate? Try to find out how many Nigerians have been able to get facilities from the banks to do their businesses. If you go abroad, banks fund your idea. Yeah. In Nigeria, bank, banks don't even fund your, 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 your investment or your whatever it is you take to them. For you to go through the process of getting a loan from a bank, it's like going through the eye of the needle. But leave that alone. They will say, oh, they are protecting depositors' money. But find out this forex stuff. Ask yourself very simple questions. Do you know that for you to get the POS working, they must have an understanding with somebody in the bank? Mm -hmm. Whereas that you cannot find money in the ATMs, yeah. try to interview the POS guys. They will tell you that they go to the banks and that the Alga is there. They sell money. Do you understand me? They frustrate yeah. the system. The, the, the money that should go into ATMs are being used by cashiers and bankers to give, to sell to these people, to sell back to us. It, I can sit down here. I mean, I have some of the biggest talk of any of the banks, the friends, you know, at the, either the MD or the chief executive or the, or the chairman is my a personal friend. I can tell you any of the top banks. But you see, we're talking of Nigeria now, not friendship. So what the, 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 the government is doing, you see, I'm starting to look at President Tunubu a little differently. Because between you and I, let's say confession on national television, I, I didn't really think that President Tinubu would be able to look at corruption. Mm. You know, it's, it's I, I don't know. I, I, I honestly, sincerely, I didn't. But there are certain things that are being done now that I'm saying you never judge a book by the cover. I'm starting to see certain, certain things he's doing. And I want to call on all Nigerians to look beyond party leave party aside and see how they can lend weight to to the system and the president to succeed now this is not like you know hero worshiping there are certain things he's doing that is wrong and i'll come here and, and call it out this is wrong this is unacceptable this is not okay okay i will do that but when he takes a right decision something that you and i probably never expected let us also apply the stick and carrot approach. And for what he's done of recent, there is no way that the CBN governor would have gone ahead to suspend these people if he did not get the authorization of Mr. President. I believe that because, I mean, he could have done that, but because of the system, the way it works. And then the ministers that have been suspended you know, I think it's one so far, but the second one seems to be on the line. And then, you know, this could not be if the president did not say go for it. And I tend to see a president who is out to surprise us. I pray that I am right this time around. But Mr. President, I beg go no vex. As I clap for you now, tomorrow, when I see the one where no day good, for instance, I like the idea of cutting cost of governance by the flights tickets and then the entourage mm -hmm. but your excellency you know that that is not where the problem is the whole budget for that is about 20 billion and taking 60 percent out is about taking maybe about them um, 10 11 no i think it's 18 billion it comes about 9 10 billion that's not where our problem is mm -hmm. 
you know where our problem is and where to count cost. I saw your convoy and it was obscene. Mm. You need to understand emotional intelligence and know that some of these things are absolutely unnecessary. So, Mr. President, you've taken a very good first step, but I beg of you, I beseech you by the mercies of God, do the one where my own brother, the Senate President, a hey, bros, no vex, so you know this is national television. As Mr. President has done, please also do. I know you will do. You are my brother. I trust you, Mr. Senate President. Also cut. Make something remain so that poor man go breathe. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so since we're still talking about corruption, there's a little one I want to take here, which says, um, federal government disbursed 10 billion exactly. to 165 private accounts in 2022. So um, we know the, the scandal that is on better edge right now about the uh, 585 million naira that was sent to an individual account, a private account. But we're even seeing that there's been antecedents to all of this. The federal government has been disbursing monies to private accounts. Even in the whole of 2022, there was about 10 billion sent to private accounts. If that's not corruption, what are we saying? Because I want to believe that if you need to do a transaction from the federal government to anybody at all, there should be proof that this is a company that you're sending the money to. And so obviously the money is being used for a project or something whatsoever. But how are you sending money to a private account? And here we're seeing about 10 billion being sent to 165 private accounts in 2022. Alone. How do you understand? Alone, 2022 alone. We're not talking about 2023 and, and now. How do we stop all of this? If we're, if we're commending the president, I don't want a situation whereby we're only looking at the humanitarian affairs ministry. Are we going to look at every one of them, every single ministry, and try to curtail the fact that there should be no reason whatsoever a ministry or even any government agency at all should be sending money to a private account. What do you think about I'll, that? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you two things. One, the banks I talked about. Yes. Two, the ministries. If you know, if you have the faintest idea of how our civil service runs, you can carry a gun and shoot somebody. <laughs> If you have, let me tell you know, you know. Sometimes it the Bible says all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. Yeah. Wisdom is profitable to direct. Yeah. There are certain things I wish I could say on air, but these are things you and I know. Yes. Towards the end of the year, the way civil servants retire money mm. that has not been used is common knowledge. Do you understand me? They run the biggest racket. This comes as no news to you and I. We know it. But somehow, we've been turning a blind eye. And let me tell you something. Better Edu, at the end of the day, I will go to her. Even if she's sent to prison. Even if. Even if. Please note, because she's innocent as of today. Yeah. I will anything. one day go to her and say, God bless you. Because she is going to become a door that is opened mm. to things that must be addressed decisively. You know, God says the son of man will need be crucified, but woe to him through it in which it comes. So somehow Nigeria will need to be rescued. But blessed is that woman that is used. Do you understand me? Maybe one way or the other. Because, you see, Better Edu had come to create a certain image for herself. Where people loved her for what she was doing. Where people envied her for the way she looks and the way she's getting results. Where people were getting anti you know, kind of apprehensive because of what could come. As a result, when the issue concerned her, there was an instant public outrage. You know, the outrage were in two ways, one in support. And you see, those people that are against you are always more vicious. <laughs> those people that love you and care about you, they never talk. You know, there was a time that Mr. Donald Duke told me, he said, he said Ezekiel, my concern about running for presidency is because 
out of every 10 Nigerians, seven love me. They care about me. They want me to be president. Out of the other three, two are just well, well, but one hates me with a passion, cannot stand me, and will. And you guess what? The seven that love me are quiet. Mm. The two that are here and there are just watching, but that one that hates me will make so much noise that this seven will run away. He said Ezekiel, I will end up probably losing because the good people are quiet and complacent and docile while the bad people are vicious. Nigeria is not as bad as people think. Oh. Mm. It's just that the bad people are extremely bad while the good people are very docile. They are very complacent. They don't, eh, you know, I don't want, why? you know, I, I contested the election. The number of people that came to me, you know, you are the best governor, you know, you are the best. They would not say it openly. Mm. I challenged one of them. I said, why don't you write this thing on Facebook? He sent me a long list of the things I've done for him in this country and blah, blah, blah. And I said, why don't you post it? He said, yo, yo, is in my language, is no. And I'm mm. like, why? Yeah. What are you afraid of? So what am I trying to say? Because it was better edu, there has been this reaction, and this yeah. reaction is the beginning of many things to come. Mm. When you talk of 10 billion paid into this number of accounts, that is just like one ministry. That is absolute nothing. But if it can be used as a point to make a statement that going forward, I was addressing my staff, I think, two days back, and one of them in particular, I told him, you know what? This is 2024. Everything that has happened in the past, I'm going to draw a line. I'm not going to look back. But I beg you, as from today, no more. If we want to look back in Nigeria, we will not make progress because too much. One way or the other, it will come around to you. So my own approach is let us make haste, you know, um, what there's a way, make haste um, slowly. Okay. Yes, let's apply wisdom and let us draw certain lines while still, you know, let me end on this because it's very important that I animate this and we know. I say this before and I bring it again. This should be what every leader should apply. In a car, you have a windscreen that goes from one end to the other, top to bottom. The whole front is windscreen, okay? But... There is a small mirror put at the top here called the rear view mirror and two of them by the side. Small, 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 right? Anybody that drives a car with the rear view mirror is sure to crash. But you cannot drive that car without that rear view mirror and the side mirrors. They help you to navigate. So we're going to keep constantly looking back at certain things but let us not drive Nigeria with the rear view and side view mirrors. Let us keep driving with the front mirror, but we need those paths to bring certain people back to give account while we now use them to set the templates going forward. That's my prescription for a new Nigeria that works for all. Okay, um, while we move to the next uh, newspaper, let me do a carry forward, you know, carry over. <laughs> carry forward. Yeah. So uh, in the, the Guardian, we have um, exit of multinationals debt knell or debt knell for local industries. We have that. We also have uh, NGX records, that is on the punch now, NGX records a 638 billion Naira loss first in New Year. And then Naira plunges to 100, oh, 1,082 Naira per dollar after CBN $2 billion repayment. Okay, so all of these are concerned, or the economy is uh, what is tied to all of these three. That's the common denominator for all the stories that I have given you. Now, what do you think the economy of Nigeria in 2024 is going to be knowing these things are happening. Multinationals are leaving, Naira is crashing every day, and then NGX is losing in, uh, as early as this in the year. What do you think will be of the economy? Uh, uh, I'll tell you this. My mother was a woman of wisdom, and she used to tell me something that has remained with me. She says, 
if money comes to your house and does not see his brother, it will not stay. That is one <laughs> of the big one. steps I have learned about savings. Mm. If money comes to your house and does not see his brother, that money will not stay. In which case, if you don't have a savings culture, no matter how it is, do you get the point? You will always, you will, you will never prosper. Now, what's the correlation of that with what you've just said? Multinationals have been in this country. All of a sudden, they are leaving. Tell me how an investor will want to come when the one that is there is leaving. The first question is, why is that guy leaving? You can now say that, you see, they used to be corrupt, and because of the way we've set up our template to make sure that we kill corruption, they can no longer thrive because they were rent seekers and this and that. As a result, they have left. You can now say, good riddance to bad rubbish. But when they tell you that the operational dynamics in the state can no longer support, you know, honest investment, when they tell you that the power sector is putting so much pressure on them that they can no longer have their bottom line, you know, the meeting. When they tell you that the level of insecurity is such that they cannot, um, you know, operate without, uh, in fact, their market is shrinking because of this or that. And when they tell you that the legal system, they've been trying to get justice, they cannot get it, the way things are, we cannot play the Nigerian way, we better just shut down and leave because we are international agencies that operate by international standards. Now, if these are facts, then why would you, if you are an honest investor coming? I repeat what I'd said before. I said this on a certain forum and one guy was, was very unhappy. I said, shut down Nigeria. Shut down Nigeria. All this going about looking for, make your fundamentals right. One year will not kill anybody. I don't want any investors. Look, you that are in here, 28 in three months, no, it's not okay. And not just 28. These are globally rated multinationals that people know who they are. What are we doing wrong? What should we do? Where are the challenges? We now look at our monetary policies and everything, our operational uh, environment. We look at uh, uh, the, the, um, the justice system. Do you understand? We look at the central bank policies. We look at the security dynamics. Why should the Southeast still have sit at home today? If I were Mr. President or his advice, I will say, sir, forget traveling abroad. Relocate to Southeast one week. Live in South is one week. Break that. Do you know that within within two weeks you can break that? Have functions on Mondays that are sit at home. Deliberately fix things. Break that jinx. What is this issue with Namdi Kanu? Come to me. Let's talk. Let's face this issue once and for all. Worry man says every diner die. <laughs> Let's face this issue once for all. South East must open up. You address that. It doesn't take you one month. Even if it takes you one month to address Southeast issues decisively, call all the leaders, call all the governors, call them the car and have a, a talk. Animate it, let people see. The first thing is that those who are afraid have functions on Mondays. Do distribution of things, palliatives, whatever, on Mondays in the market. Put things that will make and then flood. Let's see anybody fly drones. Bring drones, I'll tell you what to do. Fly drones and let's see that man that will try to attack one person. You can solve Southeast problem. You go to the Niger Delta. What are the issues? Bunkering and all that. Why is that so? Can I have a deal with the with the with the with the oil producing uh, companies, you know, the exploring companies, such that I give you a percentage to take care of it and you pay me this? Do you understand? So that the responsibility of securing this. Is on your head and what is the dynamics? We now go to the north. I will tell you what to do in the north, how to get the young people engaged and vibrant. I'll tell you how to track the system. You cannot have a situation where you say some places are ungoverned spaces. Mm. I will tell you how to track this. What I, I developed called the national eye. 
Why am I saying all these things? Because we've got to all come together. Mr. Tinu is not a one man that knows everything. No, no leader knows everything. I wanted to be a governor. I don't know anything, everything. But you are the sort of person that when ideas come, the leadership in you shows you how you can distill these ideas if you mean well. And right now, I'm starting to feel that the president means well from some of the actions he's taking. But we have to come in. I was listening to Mr. Pat to tell me about two days back, and he was frustrated. He, 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 was, he, was, he was incensed, as he speak, because we that call ourselves the elite, we are keeping quiet and letting this, with all due respect, like charlatans who don't have anything between their brains, most of them run the system. When you talk, they say, oh, you are being elitist. Oh, you are being idealistic. Oh, you are being a theorist. Can you run a system without being elitist, idealistic, and a theorist? Is there any system in the world that is not run based on cerebral competence and capacity? And you are telling me that if you have brain, you cannot be a politician. And we are setting it. That's why I'm in this politics. I don't care whether I win, I lose. I always win. Because I've decided I'll give my best to it. I cannot be sitting down. And, and I don't even know the word to use. A running system. You go for political meetings and all they do is sharing money. No. Political parties should be ideas party. Every party should be government either in action or in waiting. That's a political system. And you know that Nyaito is going to be a lone voice unless people like you come in and say that makes sense. How can you run a company without parameters, dynamics? What is the Nigeria ideology today in governance? What is the mindset of the average civil servant? Are you aware of the importance of the civil servant? That no government works without civil servants? The question is, what is the thinking? What is the mindset? What is the ideology? What is the man mental uh, well, you know, the disposition of the average civil servant? If it is negative, how then will you not have a government that has become the poverty capital of the world with endowed people? So I listen to you who make analysis, intelligent, articulate, informed, and yet we have a country. Go and look at your local government chairman. You'll be ashamed of yourself. Go and look at your councillors. And those are the people at the grassroots. Some local government chairman in, in an enlightened environment like South South Nigeria cannot read and write properly, cannot read address. And they are the people there. They are the politicians. Well, you where, where, where do we go it? from here is the question. Because uh, um, right now, like in the Ministry of the, the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry, uh, the, the minister has been suspended, suspended and the permanent secretary is taking over. And if this is the bedrock of where the corruption comes, the civil service, Best what do God. we do? Best because God. it's like, it's like you're, now sending, you're now sending a homosexual to prison for doing what he's doing. So if I'm, I'm gay and then you're sending me to where they, <laughs> those people that, <laughs> that you are sending me, so, the reason for you. sending I'm me going, to, I'm going to meet my market. Yes, yeah, I'm going to meet my, my, my pro, I'll, I'll, where, where it I'll is. I'll tell you this. You can never, no matter how close you are to a governor, you cannot raise a memo hmm. on any issue, except you are either a civil servant or an appointee at a certain level you can't raise a memo that's the thing what that means is that you actually cannot succeed in, in doing anything in the ministries without, without the, civil the civil servant. servant so the question is this better edu get to what extent is the palm said that is taking over now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. innocent as is, I'm sure you know where question. I'm coming yeah. from. That's, yeah. that's the thing. That's the thing. So now question. you're suspending one person and then putting it into the hands of another person you're not even sure is not the root cause of everything yeah, that is happening. Because the system seems already infiltrated. Because everybody who is politician, who is a politician, is advised by the people who are in the system or yes. are the civil servants. So uh, I don't even know. We, we'll just keep faith alive and that is it. And now, talking about the system that is worrisome, we also have... Yes, someone was um, indicted once for sex for Max at the sea. They suspended Unical Don, still in prison after 250 million Naira bill. I mean, why does this keep happening? Sometimes you go into the prisons and you're looking at the people 
uh, a lot of them are just there awaiting trial and nothing is being done. Some of them spend up to 10 years, I can tell you for a fact, because I've had that experience with yeah. people who I met uh, while I was doing some, some things with the prisons at one time in my life. So uh, now someone has been given bail. He has met the bail conditions, but he's still in prison. It's still after 250 million naira bail. And I don't know why the system is the way it is. You see, uh, the word impunity, I don't know, this is a two-legged question. On one hand is the word impunity. We need to come to respect rule of law as, as, as mandatory, as obligatory, as incumbent. We must come to respect rule of law. Is very important if you say a man is given is granted bail you give the conditions and the person meets the bail conditions let the person go if you don't want the person to go find a way in court of letting them know that they should please allow you and besides you know the you know the, the what happens in our in our system reminds me of the the the, the joke about the yoruba man and the worry boy do you understand me the yoruba man you know you should see the body i will kill you i will finish you he removes his dress he gesticulates and everything he's going to blah 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 he, it's all sound and fury signifying nothing fast forward to the worry guy he looks at you he gives you one bah! he said guys i'll go sound you <laughs> after he has already <laughs> finished <laughs> now the nigerian police they carry you into prison, then they do investigation, like the worry guy. Mm -hmm. But the proper thing is that even if it takes two years, they should inv investigate you even without you knowing. When they have gotten everything that is needed uh, you know, for you, within once they arrest you, by the next day they can charge you because they have everything. So I want to appeal to our enforcement agencies. I beg, don't do worry style. You slap <laughs> somebody, finish. You say, I go sound you. You bring somebody to prison before you look for, hey, what did he do wrong? Hey, what do we look? No, no, leave this one. And as a result, you are keeping the guy there to do something you could have been doing outside. And guess what? Every day that man is there, he is costing Nigeria 750 naira. I hope we remember that. I mean, that's, 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 well, that's my news. Is it, no, no, no. Compared to 12,000, 12,000, the same. No, no, I'm telling you that apart from messing with the man's liberty, you are costing the nation on top. They said no, it was 12,000 12, well, saying something. they said it was 12,000 yeah, naira every Yeah, day. that they used to, to feed, uh, to feed uh, uh, every prisoner in Nigeria. And then Thank there was the you. case of uh, the leader of the Sheikh movement that they said they were using two million or so mm. to feed him every day. And we're just talking about one person. So if you do the numbers, so through, how the numbers, a lot of people that might be there every day, even though I know it's it, not even up to five. The second leg is not up to what our politicians spend. Innocent, yeah. The, the second leg is the innocent. You'll be shocked the number of people that are innocent. Exactly. You know, That's what we're we saying. Send the, Recently, one of my one of the, the, the young people that, that was in my media team was um, arrested and I went to see him and I spent that time to talk to some of those uh, boys there. You can tell that some of them have no idea where they are there and some of them have been there for over four months. So maybe there will be, I want to thank people who go around prisons, we, we all can't do anything, my strong area is that of scholarships and education. But please, if you can afford to spare some time to go to the prisons, and some of them is bail, some bail, like 5,000 naira. Yeah. And then the IG has to really, really tell us, should we pay for bail or should we not pay for bail? I don't understand. There's something about this, you know, come and bail yourself. I don't understand. And how does it work? Because that's one area we really need to look to. Because sometimes it's like the police will just go, it's like, it's an assumption. Well, sometimes they even say bail is free. Bail is yeah, they'll free. go and collect 20 people, put you there. What you do, you don't know. They say, call your people to come and bail you. Mm. And they'll just come. Those 20, if they collect 50,000, 50,000, bros, is enough <laughs> for them to operate, you know? 
and it, it, it just makes a joke of our whole, you know, systems in terms of security and everything. We really need to really sit down and look at this thing. Tomorrow, the IG will say that the 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 the, the secret the, those roadblocks are no longer there. The next day, it will seem like they went to tell him, "Oh God, did you wake up well? You want us to leave the road? What's that?" And they'll go back there. And finally, I've said this before, and I say it again. Why don't we make money? Government can make money by security, just like GSN. What do you do? We draw all these private policemen. We draw them. Then license private you know, uh, security agencies. By so doing, you make money from licensing them. You make money from training them. And they now give people like Nyaito and the rest who want they now become the private security and not police. Nigerian police should no longer do this VIP thing. But they will not listen to me. But one day they will listen to me because they are making so much money dealing with big men. So they don't want to carry that job and give other private people and they don't make that kind of money. As a result, they deprive us of hundreds of thousands of policemen that should be guarding us because of executive. And these people can afford to deal with informed private agencies that government can make money by licensing them and by training them and creating a nexus between them and the police or the civil servant, the defense or the vigilante. Mm. I think that we really need to come and start running a governance system that is more people oriented, result oriented, yeah. other than this rent seekers that are just there and they've destroyed the system. They've destroyed the police. They've destroyed the civil service. They've destroyed everybody because service is no longer the essence for seeking public office make i don't talk enough make i keep quiet <laughs> all right thank you so much we really appreciate your time i mean you've given us some really um bright and brilliant ideas on you know how to even run nigeria and get to the next level that we want to get to but yes we want to say thank you for joining our program and thank you for coming to review the papers with us this morning it's a privilege and i don't take it lightly oh, thank, thank you, you so have much. a wonderful day sir <laughs> Thank you. All right, we've been speaking to Ezekiel in a talk, and he's a public affairs analyst who's joining us from Akwa Ibom State. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our hot topics. Please stay with us.